Hey folks, welcome to the Master That Riff lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to play Tobacco Road, uh, David Lee Roth's cover of uh, John D. Loudermilk's 60s uh, kind of tune uh, that you rocked up for Eat Him and Smile. Uh, of course, uh, Mr. Steve Vai is on guitar. I'm in standard tuning for this. And the whole thing is pretty much <clears throat> in D. And we're playing a lot of kind of little fills up at the kind of deep end tonic minor area up at the 10th fret here. Uh, it also has a, a swung feel to it, so you're not got your straight eighths again, you've got your kind of one and two and three kind of feel. So the opening phrase sounds like this. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to do a um, bend, whole step bend, 12th fret of that G string with the third finger. Then I'm going to bar the 10th fret of the high E and the B strings. Because it's swung, it's like longer in the first note. Then I've got basically a pinch harmonic at the 12th fret here. And you're aiming for like two octaves above. But you're going to bend up and down quickly with that. Okay. I'm picking just in front of my bridge humbucker here to get that uh, pinch harmonic. Do that bend up and down. Pull off to 10th fret of the G string. 12th fret of the D. And back to 10th fret of that G string. Okay. And that should be the kind of feel of it with the kind of swung eighths. Okay. Then I've got a little double stop bend. So I'm playing 12th fret of that G and B string there. And I'm going to play it kind of, it's even eighths, but obviously, well, with the swing it's not even, but what I mean is you've got one and two and, so it's one and two and. So you're doing the up the bends on the and of the beat. Yeah, so two of them. Then I play 10 fit the G string. Then I pull off 12 to 10 on that D string. Yeah. Next, we have a little trill, 10th to 12th fret here. Now watch out, that kind of lasts I think, for two beats. But when you're doing a trill, make sure you've got a very light touch well, in the sense that you're not tensing up when you do it. Um, you should be able to kind of play a trill and have a light enough touch that you can play that for about an hour if you really want to do it. Because if, if you have any tension keeping in your arm and your muscles, you'll basically seize up and you won't be able to kind of trill. So try and keep that nice and light. Okay. And then we basically enter the, the main kind of chordal bit. If I play it correctly. So what I'm doing here is I'm playing a C power chord. Third fret of that A string. First finger. Then the third and the fourth I'm playing fifth fret of the D and G strings. C power chord. But to make it a little bit bigger, I'm putting the G in the bass, or the fifth. So it's a much bigger sounding chord. And the way we come in, we're kind of doing a... Um, uh, up stroke in that and then down in beat four so it's like and four then you move up two frets to play a C power chord with that fifth in the bass which is beat one of your next bar okay now this bar here once we've done that shift to the D power chord we have this little percussive idea that's in triplets so it's playing something that's like two under three under now you could play this down up down up down up um, just to keep that alternate kind of strumming going, but I think it feels a little bit more rhythmically tighter and easier to land that down stroke in beat four if you play it down, up, down, down, up, down. So what I'm going to do here is I've just played that D power chord. I'm going to shift back and mute across the strings with the, the left hand, just lightly resting it on the strings. And with the right hand, I'm going to play down, up, down, down, up, down. But when I'm doing the, the third or the second down, so I'm doing down, up, down. That down is kind of more in the D and G strings, but the first two hits are on the kind of B and E strings. That kind of little percussive sound. Don't do it too light, you might hear harmonics there. You want to hear a bit more of a muted sound. So if I take it from the beat four of the bar, but four sounds like this. And you repeat it. Then we have this. So what I'm going to be doing here is a jump up again to 10th fret and I'm going to be doing a hammer and pull off 10 to 13 back to 10 in the B string and a rake into that note in the B string there yeah. then I play 12, 10 in the G string and then it's back to the so that's quite a jump 
Now, you could play at the fifth fret area, you know, five, eight, five, eight, six on the B string there. Um, but I think Vi probably plays it up at the tenth fret area. So watch that transition. Because you haven't got much time to get up and back down. Okay. So that's it, that's the whole riff. If I play it slowly, it sounds like this. That's it, really cool. Um, I want to say a big huge thanks to Stephen for suggesting this riff, that was one of the uh, Patreon requests, uh, so it'd be cool. I always love to do a bit of Vi, I'm a huge fan. Uh, and if uh, you're interested in the Patreon group, go and check it out. Uh, you get access to uh, the Helix patch that I created for this, and you'll also get access to the animated tab, as well as the tone tips, you know, if you haven't got Helix and you want to try and recreate the tone, I've got that there as well. Plus you get lesson requests, and there's additional lessons on there. Uh, with little kind of mini lessons and chords of the week and all that sort of stuff. So there's loads of things on the Patreon. Uh, if you want to follow me on other platforms, I'm on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, so you can follow me there. And if this is your first time on the channel, if you want to subscribe, keep up to date with what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell as well, and hopefully uh, YouTube will let you know when I upload something. So thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope you enjoy that, and I'll see you soon.